We've put an explosive charge in your head. Does that sound familiar? Philip Seymour Hoffman and his intro through the echo of him chambering around is always a win. While we're at it, Tom Cruise is always a win. This scene, come on. This might be the best cold, 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 cold open of any Mission Impossible film. I know, I know, Morty thinks you should start your stories where they begin. But In Medius Rays exists for a reason. This is it. This sets the tone for the film. A tone that's even different from the rest of the franchise. IMF agents dying is one thing. This. Ethan quite literally goes through the first four or five stages of grief in three minutes. Since I think he realizes she's gonna die no matter what he does. Shock. Denial. Anger. Bargaining. And then depression followed quickly by the acceptance of her fate. Modified, of course. The point is that Tom Cruise sells every bit of this scene, never really being truthful, and at this point, we don't even really know what's true. Hoffman is our barometer for Ethan's sincerity, stalling with confusion. I gave it to you. Having an outburst, then composing himself again to try a cocksure lie. The rabbit's foot's in Paris. That again gives way to uncontrollable terror back to crazy threatening anger. This could be Tom Cruise's sizzle reel right here. Tom Cruise is always a win. And beyond all that, Abrams introduces our two main players, the MacGuffin, and what Ethan's main motivation for this film is. Also, in Medias Race, your cinema wins Latin filmmaking word of the week. Also, it looks like Phil Parma finally tracked down Frank Mackey to let him know his wife was dying. And just in case you weren't sure how terrible you should be feeling, not jumping on a couch terrible, but close. Hugging. Oh, I'm sorry. We all need some levity after that cold opening. Julia called and told me that she was getting married. I had one thought, too bad, that daddy wasn't here to walk her down the aisle. Ethan doesn't have his parents anymore either. I got really sad. Great toast, Melly. Still soaking up the spotlight, I see. Department of Transportation. I've been there over 10 years now. Dangling from wires, sprinting, and hanging off the side of fast vehicles since 1996. You hit the brakes for a second, just tap them on the freeway. You can literally track the ripple effect of that action across a 200 mile stretch of road because traffic has a memory. I get it, be boring so no one asks too many questions. But, I'm sorry, I can't be the only one that actually finds traffic and bottleneck creation interesting, can I? I'd be on the hook for the gritty details. Maybe it's just because Tom's doing the explaining. I'd marry him. I would too. No, oh, right, exactly. Your brother wants to know. Oh God, no. Look, I know, I'm watching it. No, but that's how it is, I know. Right? He's fine, he's fine, and then suddenly he's naked and he's hugging everybody. I could be projecting here, but I don't think Jesse, I mean, Rick has an alcohol problem. It's Agent Ferris. She's disappeared. Been off grid 11 hours. Why don't you just teleport over there and vaporize all the bad guys? I know. I just... And then go to Mars. Three days ago, Agent Lindsay Ferris was captured while on a surveillance operation. Might want to check with the Russians. Luther is good on artillery, isn't he? Tom Cruise does look good on a motorcycle. And, let's be honest, Tom Cruise sprints like a champ. Each movie obviously has its own aesthetic from each director. Let's fire. But really, this burnt out old warehouse is completely different Let's fire. from anything in the franchise. There's adrenaline, Lindsay. <laughs> You're gonna feel this. Honesty and generosity. Ethan! <laughs> yep, also teamwork that turns into more awesome teamwork. And did I mention Felissa, I mean, Carrie Russell is always a win. <laughs> Three always a win actors in this movie. That might be a record. I'm out. How many rounds he got? Enough. No, no. Yeah, badass good guy. And there was a little biology lesson in there for you, I no. guess you'd call it. Lindsay was drugged with some kind of depressant, so Ethan shot her up with adrenaline, which turned her into a super spy. Totally fake, right? Well, not really. Adrenaline is specifically designed by our bodies to protect us from deadly situations. It's said that adrenaline in your blood can increase muscle strength up to 40%. It can make it feel like time is slowed and you achieve laser-like focus. So Lindsay had it artificially injected while Ethan, knowing he only has one shot, increases his breathing rate to force his own body to dump adrenaline into his bloodstream to help his anti-stormtrooper aim. And it works. Ethan Hunt plus hanging on exterior of high-speed moving vehicle equals win. And they banked a bunch of those out quick. Yeah, nitroglycerin and magnesium in your head would make for a bad day. <laughs> Leave it to J.J. Abrams. No, no, I'm telling you, a windmill blade crashing to the ground is gonna be super awesome and dramatic. Thank you. Oh, that's freaking brutal. That's the kind of sound that haunts your nightmares. Or gets right. added to the nightmares that are already haunting you. So there was a split second where I thought, yeah, that'd be so cool, go on secret missions where your fiance doesn't even know how badass you are, and then I realized, Ugh, not being able to talk to her about it? Sorry, I, I know I'm being a sap, but if I couldn't tell my wife about what's stressing me out? Talk about sacrifice. I tried it once and couldn't eat for three days. He's like, 
damn invisible man. Wells, not Ellison, in case you want to be cute again. Wait, because Brassel is black? Like, Musgrave would make a racist joke about a black man preferring the story about a man's skin color rendering him invisible? And that's cute? I guess Brassel knew Musgrave was a bad guy from the beginning. And you never slept with your little sister, right? <laughs> oh, that's not, that's not funny, Luther. I always assume it's the anti-god. But no, I don't have any idea what it is. I was just speculating. Have to give Simon Pegg some credit for earning his bigger role in the next one. He's given a few minutes of screen time and scary exposition, but still keeps it interesting. <laughs> oh, you Italians, so understanding. Tom Cruise on a wire still working. Ethan Hunt plus danger plus suspended precariously from rope equals win. And even a little extra fun with it running up the wall reverse Alice style. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Okay, this is the Mission Impossible stuff we love. Teammates working together, goofy disguises, and fun technology aiding an infiltration mission. Between finally showing us how these masks are made and making the entire thing look believable by taking multiple angle pictures, the carving and painting process, and the visual effects slowly sliding into place as Luther helps him put the mask on. Fantastic! Jules and I got married two days ago. Congratulations. Impartiality? And then Philip Seymour Hoffman doing Ethan level parkour? Read this. Slowly. Read it. Okay, Hoffman pretending to be Tom in his own body. Oh, you are sorely missed, Philip. What's up? Nothing. What's up with you? Nothing. <laughs> I know it's not for a super long time, and Philip Seymour Hoffman was something of a superstar, but I gotta give Tom Cruise credit for letting someone else play him like this. Often in the past, it was really just Tom Cruise in a mask. I'm gonna find her. Whoever she is, I'm gonna find her and I'm gonna hurt her. Sorely, sorely missed. He does so much with so little. These lines could have been absolute trash in less capable hands. I mean, you saw what I did to your little blonde friend at the factory, right? Oh, well, that was nothing. That was um, fun. Man, Ethan Hunt has the most resilient internal organs. And bones. Eardrums. Anti-stormtrooper, anti-drone aim. Okay. So as much as Ethan and co get their butts handed to them on this prison escape, let's just consider for a second that Ethan was blown up, shot at, shot at some more, blown up again, almost fell off a bridge, and was still able to get into position as they were leaving, but was out of bullets because he'd wasted them shooting down the drone that was bombing them. What's that? Oh, Julia, you're only supposed to be so trusting of Ethan. Oh, gut wrenching, so close. Hey. Let's be honest, Tom Cruise sprints like a champ. I will bleed on the flag to make sure the stripes stay red. America. It's amazing how just one quick silly little scene in the beginning sets this up as one of Ethan's skills, and not only do you not question it, you're actually a little thrilled to be on the inside, knowing what only these two know. It's funny, you'd think the guy with the name Must Grave would be your undoing. Worst job ever. I really hate to be a G-man in charge of detaining spies. This is their job, literally their job is to escape capture and break your face. Ha, <laughs> he does work for the DOT. Oh, is this a John Nash situation where, oh, right, forgot. I like how this is just sort of played off as no big deal and it's just another day in the life for Ethan using his vast skill set and personal resource base. Four guards, full time, two on each rooftop. It's almost like security services have heard the stories about the guy who dangles from a wire and steals your crap through the roof. Yep, confirmed. Beautiful mind situation. Base jump off the top, I need to shoot. Come on now, Ethan, you base jumped last time. And we have two hours before they kill my wife. Are you in or not? The one thing I will say was missing from Mission Impossible 2 was this Ethan. The totally overwhelmed, Claire's alive, Jim was the mole, Ethan. End of his rope. I love this Ethan. We're gonna find a rabbit's foot, get back to the roof, radio me when you're ready to make the jump, and we're gonna come get you. Encouragement from your best buddy? Dude, that's some perfect timing. I have a hard time letting go of the rope swing over the water at the right time. More anti-stormtrooper aim. What the hell do you mean you can't make it to the roof? Where are you? Look up, look up, look up! I knew you'd find a way to change it up. Really, I love everything about this scene. The crazy buildup of the fulcrum swing and then the calm down while Ethan does his thing off screen. And since we didn't have any problems with the base jump last time, you know it's not gonna be so easy this time. I mean, that's like the opposite of what parachutes are supposed to do. Oh, and by the way, Ethan Hunt plus danger plus suspended precariously from rope twice equals double win. 
another stunt to be filed under unnecessary risks taken by Tom Cruise due to his unimpeded devotion to realism. Real car, real face. Also, Ethan Hunt plus hanging on exterior of high-speed moving vehicle equals win. Look at that, Davian's such a class act he sends limos for his kidnapping victims. Ten. No! No! I don't enjoy trying to imagine what that would feel like, but I still think paralyzed is exactly how I'd react. Ooh, I love that slow focus. You know how when you're tired and you're zoned out, it's hard to bring your eyes back into focus? Emotional trauma can create a similar sensation. That, combined with not believing your friend is the one actually sitting in front of you as he super slowly comes into focus. It's complicated. Also, it's slimy, but it's slimy in a... All right, I can't wait for you to get yours kind of way. Did she know about the work I was doing? Could I be compromised at IMF? Did she buy that brass will set her up? This is such a perfect example of why not to be the bad guy. You never trust anything or anyone. You'll always be paranoid, always looking over your shoulder. His plan to incriminate Brassel worked and he totally blew it. You told him. That's how Davy knew Lindsay was coming. You told him. I thought you could get her back. I also really love that this movie's story, meaning Ethan going back to active duty, all happened for a real reason, nothing contrived. Musgrave set Lindsay up believing that he could convince Ethan to retrieve her because of his relationship with her. And he did, just not ultimately alive. It also sets Ethan's mind at ease, thinking he had sent an underprepared agent into the field. He's an affirmative action poster boy. Oh, I guess Musgrave probably did make some racist jokes to Brassel. So that's like a callback. U.S. Security Council will get a report by this time tomorrow. We're talking a military strike within a week. Democracy wins. And politics aside, I always like a villain with a heart of gold. Well, not gold. And you could argue the efficacy and ethics of his tactics. But after Sean, give me that money, Ambrose, at least we got a villain doing what he thinks is best for the country. It's the only play you have left. Hi, I'm Ethan Hunt. Have we met? I've literally never had only one play left. Also, come on, Musgrave. There's a reason IMF makes IMF captured spies wear these lecture masks. I need a trace location. The last call made from his phone. Not only did he not have one play left, he had multiple other plays with multiple other steps. He probably knew she had to be alive, but now he can get the trace of her location, so on and so forth. Wait, okay, just hold, hold the line, please. And I do love Simon Pegg, even when he's not in an Edgar Wright film. It's in a building one mile to the northeast. Reggie, lead me to the signal. And if you thought a Simon Pegg as Siri navigation with Tom Cruise running real fast would not make for a compelling scene, you'd be mistaken. Mostly because nine times out of 10, I know I'm actually watching Tom Cruise bouncing around rooftops in Shanghai, and it works. Yes, this is a long scene of Tom Cruise running, but we've all agreed Tom Cruise sprints like a champ. And you feel that, that adrenaline, that urgency? Desperation knows no language. It's good to know he didn't lose those martial arts skills from the Australian beaches. You might be wondering why a brain bomb capsule would even have the torture before making your eye look gross function. And I think you answered your own question. Davian has some promises to keep. I told you I was going to kill you in front of her. But I'm going to kill her in front of you. Even if he's sort of changing those promises a little. Yep, so satisfying. That's what you call using the pain. Another callback to that adrenaline lesson from earlier. Terribly disgusting ingenuity. They don't have one. What? What's a defibrillator? Let's call that an ex machina dodge. It kind of looks like a medical facility, so no one would have questioned it. When the bag is empty, the slide will lock back like this. How do you know so much about this? Handgun lessons from a DOT analyst. Why are you giving me a gun? There could be others. If you have to use it, stay low. You identify your enemy. Point shoot. It's very simple. Point shoot. For the record, this is not anything I would have even thought about which I guess is why I'm not a spy. It's just fun to see Ethan sort of starting to spill the beans about his real life and get to show off a little by almost humble bragging. You'll be fine, just point and shoot. I don't have more than a decade of training under my belt or anything. I have a charge in my head. I'm gonna die unless you kill me. Hashtag failed pickup lines. I love you. I love you. Brutal. Also love that she barely hesitates. Trust. And let's talk about how Ethan's technically dead with the finale of this movie while Julia becomes the action hero. Exactly. Dang, all I had to do was not point my gun at her. <laughs> there he is. Ethan's alive. Impossible mission force. Roll crit. Wait. Shut up. Rabbit's foot. What is it? Promise me you'll stay, I'll tell you. Sounds like some kind of Mueller device. 
<sighs> Mission Impossible 3, the one that got everything back on track for those of you who didn't care for Wu's take on the second one. The serious one. I'm not mocking, I love this movie. I'm just impressed how Abrams turned it around. And regardless of your opinions on Abrams' later work, you can't deny this film's competency or his talent for continuity and pacing. This movie never doubles up anything, except the running. Tom had a running quota to fill in this one. But it actually goes out of its way to avoid repeating things from the first two films. Oh, you, you've seen Ethan steal stuff twice now? Let's just focus on the fun pendulum swing and then cut to the people praying outside. Cold open to get you pumped up about the movie and reminded of what an unstoppable badass Ethan Hunt is? Nah, let's depress you, kill his girlfriend, and then cut to him in modified retirement. So, just as Tommy Boy intended for each film, it's different, but it's the same. It's still Ethan. It's still Tom. It reminds me of the Family Guy episode where Brian and Stewie travel through different animation styles. We get to see Ethan through a bunch of different directors' lenses, lens flares. For being the more serious film, the action set pieces in this film actually surpass MI2's action in a lot of ways. From the first real action scene of Ethan and Lindsay working together, fun to see a female IMF agent kicking butt, to the bridge scene that's just full-on desperation as Ethan runs back and forth on the bridge trying to save the cluster cuss that is this escape. And as much as I appreciated the risk taken in not showing the actual rabbit's foot heist, I would have liked to see it. I'm glad they bring more of the details back in the next one. But I get that the point was to really pinpoint that the MacGuffin was a rabbit's foot. I mean, the rabbit's foot is a MacGuffin. You feel me? The real narrative is Ethan trying and failing to protect the people he loves. First Lindsay, his adopted sister of sorts, and then his wife. One knows who he is, the other what he does. Both trust him implicitly because of the man he is and the lengths he's willing to go. And Ethan Hunt wouldn't be anything without someone to challenge him. Jim Phelps was great, Sean Ambrose was... But Philip Seymour Hoffman takes the villain cake so far. He's stoic and ruthless. He's like the anti-Brian Mills Liam Neeson. Just very matter of fact. That's fun. Never affected, rarely riled up. You get the sense that he's dealt with Ethan's type before, and it's only his hubris and overconfidence in a brain explorer that has too long a wick that are his undoing in the end. Oh, and also this truck. Not to diminish Hoffman at all, but opening with this scene makes you hang on every single word, believe every threat. You don't know how, but you know he gains the upper hand at some point. And that makes for a really fun ride. And you can feel JJ's hand throughout this movie, from the side conversations with Luther peppering him about his fiance to their little inappropriately lax and quippy exchanges during high stress situations. There's quite a few nods to Alias and Lost, but none of it takes you out of the film. It was a great first outing on film for Abrams. And a great third outing for this franchise, and probably what a lot of us expected to be the peak of quality moving forward. But somehow they kept making hits. Next week, a much requested newer film, but probably not that one. I'm getting there, I promise. Okay. He made it. He made it. I knew he'd make it.